Unified's first Wi-Fi 7 access point, U7 Pro, has just been released. New technology is always exciting, but the having new access point does not automatically equate to better performance. Let's take a close look at U7 Pro's specification and actual performance. Let's get started. When compared to the previous generation, the key highlight of U7 Pro specifications are followings. Use of Qualcomm Immersive Home 3210 chipset. Six stream tri-radio with each radio supporting 2x2 MIMO, Wi-Fi 7 standard. 2.5 gigabits per second uplink port. Requires PoE plus power. And $189 price point. My personal theory is CPU specification is one of the most predictable factor for access point performance, especially Wi-Fi efficiency, which is the measure of how close the access point can squeeze out the maximum theoretical throughput. In the past generations, Unify access points have ranged between 50 to 60 percent Wi-Fi efficiency. This in contrast, the same generation Wi-Fi 6 Enterprise access point had upper 60s to 70 percent. This means there were 100 to 200 megabits per second throughput gain by using enterprise access point when compared to Unify. When we look at CPU, it was evident that in Wi-Fi 6 generation, enterprise access points used quad-core A53, while Unify had dual-core A53. On Unify 7 Pro, the chipset now uses quad-core A53, so based on my theory, U7 Pro should now be able to attain closer to enterprise Wi-Fi 6 access point performance on Wi-Fi 6 clients. There are already many great articles and videos about Wi-Fi 7, so I won't go into detail about it. In brief, new technologies from Wi-Fi 7 can improve single client maximum throughput over two times when compared to Wi-Fi 6E generation, and four times for many of us who come from Wi-Fi 6 client. This drastic throughput leap primarily comes from the use of 320 MHz channel width. Latency and stability improvement will primarily come from multi-link operation technology which is analogous to link aggregation in wired network. They all sound great, and exactly what we want with newer Wi-Fi generation. However, we have to remember that we can only get these benefits if we have both Wi-Fi 7 capable access point and client device. In regarding to 2x2 MIMO on all three channels, U7 Pro is not able to support MU MIMO, and if you have 3x3 or 4x4 client device, they won't be able to take the full advantage. However, in many home use situations, where majority of clients are 2x2 and MU MIMO may not operate, the loss here may not be significant. Unlike U6 Pro, U7 Pro comes with 2.5 gigabits per second uplink. This is practical and necessary. With the 160 MHz and wider channel width support, real throughput can reach over a gigabit, so in order to take this advantage, we need 2.5 gigabits per second supporting switch. It's important to note that PoE power requirement for U7 Pro is PoE+, plus, which is different from U6 Pro. So if you plan to power U7 Pro over the Ethernet, be sure to have a comparable switch. One of the main sales point of U7 Pro is its price. Since Wi-Fi 7 is still fairly new, there is no second-hand market, so we have to pay retail price. This makes U7 Pro's price point to be extremely affordable for those who want to try out Wi-Fi 7. Now, let's start taking a look at actual test results. Let's start with speed or throughput. Better performance in 5 GHz radio has the most impact in quality of Wi-Fi in our home because most of our performance-dependent client devices right now use Wi-Fi 6. So let's look at this first. For the test setup, I used iPhone 14 Pro Max 
which is 2x2 Wi-Fi 6 client capable of 80 MHz channel width. Access point to client distance is less than 5 feet with full line of sight. The testing method used is at least two IPARF tests and pick the better of the two. If there is a significant difference between two test results, then repeat it additional times until the result looks to be stabilized. The test result here is quite impressive. Based on the CPU specification, I had expected U7 Pro to be able to achieve significantly better performance than the U6 Pro and be much in closer to the enterprise access point for the numbers. But the actual result turned out to be U7 Pro is compatible to the higher performing Rucus Wi-Fi 6 access points than the HP Aluva series. Another important part of the test result to me is minimum throughput. In the previous generation Unify access points, such as U6 Pro, SHD, took several seconds to ramp up to its average or peak throughput. The initial throughput was always significantly lower than the average. This is what I call rise time from electronics term, or similar to 0 to 60 in cars. Although this is just my personal opinion, the majority of Wi-Fi data transfer, such as web browsing and small local file transfer need just the first couple seconds of throughput, this rise time difference felt to have a practical impact in daily Wi-Fi quality. Whether this is true or not, U7 Pro has finally essentially eliminated this from Unify product line. U7 Pro is my first access point supporting 6 GHz radio, as I had made a decision to skip Wi-Fi 6E generation altogether. So I do not have a direct comparison data myself. I have only three Wi-Fi 6E capable client devices in our household right now but one of them is wired for 10 gigabits per second connection. The other two are iPad Pro 2023 model and Windows desktop that uses Intel Killer Wi-Fi 6E AX1675 chipset. Both are 2x2 clients. The testing setup is same as previous, except this time I use iPad Pro 2023 model connected at 160 MHz channel width. The Wi-Fi efficiency here calculated 60% for upload and 51% on download. The rise time here are nearly instant with either 0 or 1 second. There are users reporting nearly maxing out 2.5 gigabits per second wired link speed with their Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, which is Wi-Fi 7 client that supports 320 megahertz channel width. This is indeed expected and advertised result of Wi-Fi 7. Unfortunately, I currently do not have any Wi-Fi 7 client device myself to test this. With the performance gain seen on the Wi-Fi 6, I got curious about how this translates into Wi-Fi 5 devices since they share 5 GHz radio band with Wi-Fi 6 device. Their improvement will help overall network performance. Similar to Wi-Fi 6 clients, Wi-Fi 5 clients showed improved Mac throughput with U7 Pro. Next, let's take a look at the range of coverage and performance. Practically, this may be more important on our daily Wi-Fi quality than maximum throughput. The lower the frequency, the longer the range of coverage. So if someone is looking for the absolute best range of Wi-Fi coverage, we have to look at 2.4 GHz though they have less throughput and can be less stable due to interference. Based on EIRP specification, we can expect U7 Pro to provide similar range of maximum coverage to U6 Pro and U6 Enterprise. With the transmission power set to maximum, U7 Pro's 2.4 GHz radio is able to make a stable connection to IoT device located at the one end from the other end in the 3,700 square foot two-story home. This connection requires to go through several walls, including insulated garage wall. Although Ubiquiti Unify used their long-range product lines to better support 2.4 radio coverage, I don't see any need for this at our home with current U7 Pro's coverage, especially 
since I plan to deploy multiple access points for better 5 and 6 GHz radio coverage. Now let's look at the primary radio band, 5 GHz. Overall, when compared to U6 Pro, the test result here was mixed. For the 5 GHz range comparison, I've been doing two tests at 30 feet distance, with the setup being, again, iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is 2x2 two two Wi-Fi 6 client. Access point to client distance is now 30 feet with line of sight. The testing method here include RSSI measurement using Air Mac app. This allows us to look at client point of view signal strength measure. And again, performing IPARF tests, similar to prior. For the RSSI, the smaller number indicates less negative value, hence more stronger signal seen by client, which equates to better range. On this test, we see U7 Pro matching the best-in-class range access point, Rucus R750, and outperforming U6 Pro significantly. However, when the actual throughput is measured at this same spot, U7 Pro turned out to be the slowest. With the ranged throughput, we will be dealing with a lot of factors such as interference, other client device airtime utilization, and antenna design. Since my tests are not scientific, I think any of the combination may be contributing to the result. In another word, there is a possibility that throughput result here may be just by a chance. So I looked at another, even less scientific range performance data. This is storage area throughput measurement at our home. Our storage area is located in basement and surrounded by concrete walls. So the best way to get Wi-Fi signal in here is to use access point located floor above. With the U6 Pro, despite it looked to have reasonable average throughput, the connection was very unstable as shown by minimum throughput of zero. Basically, it looked as if I kept losing connection during IPARF testing with the U6 Pro. With the U7 Pro, this is no longer happening and the actual average throughput is now matching Rucus R750, which is more in line with RSSI data. I've also noticed good throughput in elsewhere in our home with U7 Pro, so overall my subjective range performance of U7 Pro 5 GHz is awesome. As I have said earlier, I do not have reference here because U7 Pro is my first access point with 6 GHz radio support. Based on the specification, U6 Enterprise have over 3 dBm EIRP advantage. dBm is logarithmic scale, so 3 dBm difference translates into twice transmission power difference. Now, this does not translate to 2 times physical distance range, but regardless, based on the specification, we can expect U6 Enterprise to have significant advantage over U7 Pro when it comes to 6 GHz range coverage. Stability is one of the key elements for network devices for me. Since I have been using U7 Pro for only the last few days, I cannot say the long-term stability, but so far it has been working well for me. The only and consistent stability-related issue I have encountered so far is if I connect to U7 Pro right after it reboot, after a few minutes, I get disconnected. This may be related to currently listed as fixed bug on upcoming release candidate firmware 6.6.65, where it talks about fixed 6 GHz channel change causing a full provision. Otherwise, I have not observed any random device disconnect or any client connection issue. Wi-Fi call roaming has also been working well without any drop so far. Although Ubiquiti Unified products have been more stable and reliable than consumer graded gears for me, they seem to have a tendency of releasing new products before thorough quality and control. In another word, their product at launch feel a beta rather than complete product. U7 Pro is functionally usable but it's not free of a concern. 
At the time of this recording, there are some issues that I am experiencing. The first issue is officially recognized and reproducible. When you use U7 Pro with VLAN tagged SSID, that throughput is halved. This is a major issue. At the time of this recording, even the latest early access firmware version have not yet fixed this. My current unified Wi-Fi setup uses one U7 Pro and one Unify Access Point SHD. As I've sold other Unify Access Points, with this setup, iPad Pro 2023 never seems to roam to 6 GHz. Now, I have not manually configured radio parameters, but I can confirm for the most part, disconnecting and reconnecting to the same SSID will pick 6 GHz at the same spot. So it feels like roaming can be improved Personally, the main concern about U7 Pro at the moment is performance inconsistency on 6 GHz. I have no other 6 GHz access point to cause interference on the radio. Yet, when I check the actual throughput, it often falls in the range slower than typical 5 GHz, even though it shows clear 160 MHz 6 GHz connection. I've tried to disconnect and reconnect, play around with other radio band parameter, and see if 5 GHz upper band can be interfering, as noted by other vendors in the past. I have yet to find a consistent, reliable fix. In conclusion, U7 Pro boosts Wi-Fi 5 and 6 clients performance, compatible to top-of-the-line enterprise Wi-Fi 6 access point. Since majority of our home Wi-Fi clients are Wi-Fi 5 and 6, these Wi-Fi quality improvement alone is sufficient reason for me to consider upgrading, even though I currently do not own any Wi-Fi 7 product. On the other hand, the known VLAN half-throughput reduction issue, along with unpredictably inconsistent low 6 GHz performance and poor 6 GHz roaming, made my first 6 GHz experience rather unimpressive from the practical standpoint. However, if Ubiquiti can fix these issues and still able to maintain current high Wi-Fi efficiency performance, U7 Pro will be the reference standard for all other Wi-Fi 7 access points on the market, given its highly affordable price point. I am very thrilled about Unified Wi-Fi 7 product lines right now. In fact, I am waiting for two more U7 Pro to test full Wi-Fi 7 access point setup at my home next. Thanks for watching.